Hey, what's going on? Sorry I have not made very many videos lately. I've been really busy, but now that the holidays are over, I should be able to kick it up a notch. Uh, but anyway, um, I wasn't originally planning to make a video about this, but and I thought it was kind of fitting for the channel, because it's kind of technology related and a little to do with electronics, a little bit of physics, a little bit of chemistry. Um, so. Uh, if some of you probably already know what this is, this is a carboy. Uh, it's made out of glass. It is for brewing, well, fermenting beer. Uh, so you basically uh, put the wort in here. It's what it's called. Um, it's the beer that's basically ready to be fermented. Uh, you boil it, get it ready, and then you put it in here, and it'll be really high in sugar. And then the yeast eats the sugar, poops out alcohol, and then before you know it, you have beer. So. Uh, this is an airtight cap, and then this is just an airlock. Uh, once you put it in here to ferment, it's super, super crucial that it is uh, sanitary. So you don't want any air getting in, uh, which could get bacteria and junk in there that could end up killing all your yeast. So uh, this, you put water up to this line, and it's basically an airlock, uh, you know, because bubbles will rise, so the air can escape, but air can't obviously uh, go back down through water to get back into here so uh, that's what the point of this is but anyway um, so for fermentation they have specific temperature ranges depending on the type of yeast and the type of beer so uh, I was doing an ale it's an IPA more specifically and I think the yeast that I used said 69 degrees to 78 degrees or something like that you know it's basically um, in the the mid to to lower 70 degree range Fahrenheit um, I don't think it's super crucial where in within the range that you're at as long as you keep it consistent but I think it does affect uh, the beer though if you do two batches and you do one at the lower end of the range and, and then you do the other gallon at the other end of the range they will come out tasting different from what I've been reading I've not tried that but because um, I don't have two carboys but I, I should try that it'd be interesting to see but uh, consistency is, is key with doing this type of stuff, especially with brewing. So, uh, my basement, I have a basement. Uh, um, it's not a walkout, so it's a full true basement. And um, basements are really good for this type of stuff because they hold temperature. They stay, they stay at a steady temperature. Um, now, it does change with what the outside temperature is. So, when I, when I first put this down there, the basement temperature, I mean, it was still, despite being December, it was still... Oh, uh, like 50s outside. It was really crazy warm. I think it's because of El Nino. Um, but due to that, the basement was, I think, right around 70... I think it was right around like 74 degrees or so. And then finally, temperatures dropped back down to normal winter temperatures for December in the Midwest. And then my basement temperature dropped a few degrees to kind of match it. And so then uh, the temperature of uh, my wart started to to drop and I actually put this sticker these are usually put on like server racks for example and there's lots of uses for these but that's where I've seen them used most and um, I have happened to have some extras uh, because they came in a big like 20 pack so I stuck one on here just as a really easy analog way of telling the temperature and I just saw it dropping little by little as the temperature outside got cooler uh, and it never got actually sorry I think it was mid 60s is what the basement was I think the temperature range is 59 to to 70. Anyway, it's, it started off in the middle here and then um, near the end of the fermentation, the primary fermentation, the temperature started to get down between 60 and 62 and that's like right at the bottom of the of the temperature range for that specific strain of yeast. So I started to get a little worried. I didn't want that whole batch to get ruined. Uh, I didn't do anything about it because I only had a day left, but I decided that maybe for future uh, batches that I would build a fermentation chamber. Now, I'm not huge into this. This is this is literally my first gallon that I've done. My friend came over and helped me. He's big into it. I have a few friends that are into home brewing. Um, but I think it could be a fun hobby in the future. So anyway, I thought um, even if I never do this again, it would still be fun to build one. And maybe if I don't ever do it again, I could just give it to him, to my friend that helped me, uh, build a fermentation chamber. So basically a really, really well-insulated chamber and then maybe a temperature sensor. And then uh, I was thinking a Peltier, so... Um, this is probably what I'm going to use. Um, if you're familiar with this, so, some people might be familiar with this. This is uh, out of a Coleman 12-volt cooler. You plug 
well, not this end, but this connects into another connector, a female version of this. And that plugs into the 12 volt uh, power of your car or your boat or your camper or wherever you have 12 volt power and uh, it'll cool the inside of your cooler. Or if you reverse it, that's why the color is on here. You match the colors and um, if you reverse polarity to a Peltier, obviously uh, it pumps heat in the other direction. So, so anyway, um, it already came mounted with a nice heat sink on either side, obviously a bigger one for the hot side, and nice insulation uh, in the middle, because that's kind of an area where uh, you lose a lot of energy, and these are terribly inefficient, by the way. Uh, I, I didn't pick this for efficiency, I picked this for simplicity. Uh, no moving parts, really easy to use, you just give it some current. Uh, so. Um, my thoughts were that the basement is already right within the fermentation range that you want anyway. All I need is something to kind of nudge it back into the middle of the temperature range. So it wouldn't take much energy to get it to where it needs to be. So I thought Peltier would be perfect. All it has to do is adjust the temperature a couple degrees off of ambient. So, you know, if it's 62 in the basement and I want to get this to 65, that would only be three degrees that it would have to heat the inside. And these are much more efficient at heating than they are at cooling. So, um, and, but obviously I'm still going to put the hot, the hot side on the outside. Um, so that if I do cooling, uh, loggers require much colder fermentation temperatures, I, th I think down in the 40s and 50s. I don't know if this will be capable of it, probably not, but uh, it would still be worth trying. And so for that reason, I'm going to keep the hot heat sink on the hot side. Um, that way uh, I have the best chance possible when I go, when it comes time to, to try that out. But um, So I'm, I'm showing you this first because I'm going to go to show you my CAD drawing of my first fermentation chamber and I haven't actually redone it. I, I'm going to redo it because I well, I'll explain that when I get to it, but this is just so you can you can see the real real deal. So, uh Peltier I think is probably on uh mounted in Well, actually I don't know. There's got to be a block in there because obviously Peltier is not that thick. They're usually just a few millimeters thick, but uh and if you're wondering what this is, well, this went to a fan and yeah. That went to a fan, and that's just a little diode bridge. Uh, now this was hooked, it was like glued to the edge of uh, one of the heat sinks, the hot side heat sink. And it's directly in the current path that goes to the main Peltier. And so it's an analog device, the handle's high current, um, that's directly in series with the Peltier, so the only thing I can think of that that would be is uh, it's a PTC. So. Um, positive temperature coefficient, the hotter it gets, um, the higher the resistance gets. So it's basically like uh, thermal protection. So uh, they, they probably picked one with a very specific temperature range. So, you know, they don't, you don't get thermal runaway and then people burn, you know, their camper down because they left this, you know, plugged in overnight and this got too hot because, you know, the heat sink got covered by someone's dirty clothes or something. So I'm pretty sure that's what that is. So I might actually leave that on there just for a security blanket, but I don't know. I don't know. I might actually test it. Yeah, I might actually test it and see uh, what temperature it is rated for when it actually starts to to go open. But anyway, um, and this is the fan I'll, I'll probably use. Uh, it has really good static pressure, and higher static pressure is good for pushing air through uh, obstructions like the fins of a heatsink. So um, I I could get a much more powerful fan, but this is really mostly just going to be for circulating air to keep, to keep the air nice and um, even, I guess, because obviously it's natural convection. Um, air will still try to be mostly even, but you know, the air at the, t air at the top of your chamber will be hotter than the air at the bottom, which will be cooler. And so if I do some forced circulation, hopefully I'll keep the temperature more even throughout, which will make uh, this cycle on and off. Um, you, you won't get as much short cycling, I guess. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do a PID controller. I kind of considered doing a microcontroller because then uh, I could maybe hook this up through a relay and then just reverse the, the polarity um, so I can do heating or cooling and the Arduino can, Ardu well, not necessarily just Arduino. It could be AT Tiny. It could be a Pi. Pi is probably overkill for this. I don't need a screen or anything. I just need to, well, maybe a screen because I do need to set the temperature unless I have predetermined temperatures set and then I can use like a seven segment display to just show which temperature preset uh, I toggle through with the single button. I don't know. There's lots of things I can do. We'll, we'll cover that uh, bridge when we get to it. But um, 
yeah, now that we've seen this, we will uh, head to the computer and take a look at my really quick and dirty CAD drawing for uh, the fermentation chamber. Okay, so this is the uh, design I've done in SketchUp. It's ca it's, SketchUp is free, well, it's not, if, the maker version is free, but uh, they have professional versions of the software you can buy, but it's definitely one of the simpler ones, but that's why I like it, it's, it's fairly easy to use. So anyway, I designed it in here, this is really rough, it's my first draft, uh, I'm not good with building things, so please go easy on me, but if you have any suggestions, absolutely tell me in the comments, I would love to know <laughs> what I'm doing wrong, or what I could do better. Uh, so anyway, this is a rough draft. This isn't the one I'm gonna end up building But I thought I'd show it to you so you can see what I decided to change. It's still a neat design. It's kind of cool uh, So this is the outside heatsink And I don't have a fan or power supply or the microcontroller in this so the top is left um, For interpretation, you know, I'll probably design that in later Really the main goal is to get the main fermentation chamber done first. So anyway for the sake of this video uh, I made a copy of the design and then in this one I cut the entire back off. Uh, it's basically like a cutaway so you can see how the inside of the unit works. So uh, first thing is first, uh, I, I decided I did figure out how to get the carboy in and out of the fermentation chamber so I thought of doors, lids, hinges, latches and nothing I could think of would give me a good seal that's consistent without leaking a bunch of energy out. Uh, so what I, what I decided to do is to make the top and a top and bottom section that just lifts off and then um, obviously it's double insulated that's because Peltiers are really inefficient so as long as it's well insulated it shouldn't have to do too much work to just nudge the temperature a couple degrees in the right direction uh, so that's why I'm going overkill with the insulation and I decided to do the um, the different layers at different heights uh, just so um, you know, it makes it harder for air to escape out of here because it'll be it'll have more obstacles to go past. Uh, I'll, I would cover these surfaces all with foam tape. You know that black like foam tape you can put around your doors and stuff. Uh, and then gravity will just hold this on here, and it should give me a pretty good, nice, healthy seal. So um, that is the plan for that. Um, the bottom doesn't come apart. The next version I'm going to do that because. Uh, the first day of fermentation, it produces a lot of foam, which is called croisin, and if you, your liquid level is too high, it can boil over and spill down. And if that spills down through the hole in the bottom, I can get build up down here and I won't have any way to get down there to clean it. So in the next version, the bottom will be like the top, where gravity holds it all together, and so uh, that's something I'm going to change. Obviously, you could probably kind of tell how this works. There's a computer fan, 120 millimeter one, it blows air into the main chamber, and at the very bottom, there's a hole where the, the uh, air gets sucked through it, and that's why it's sitting on these wood blocks. If I put the carboy in the bottom, it would just plug the hole. So it's just up on these, that way the air can escape past and out the hole down into the bottom section where it goes through this duct all the way back up to the top. Then when it gets to the top, you've got, in this case, this will be the hot side. I'll be using the, I'll be using the Peltier for heating because it's winter right now. I'm sure in the summer it'll be the other way around, but the air will come out right here through the heatsink, back through the fan, back into the chamber. Now, the reason I decided to put the holes in the center of the top and the bottom is to keep airflow even. Now, if I put a hole t like over to the left side, for example, um, it could create hot, hot and cold spots where you know over here might be a hot pocket, over here might be a cool area. I didn't want that. I wanted it to be nice, symmetrical, and even. And I'm really OCD about symmetry with a lot of things. So that's one thing. I wanted there to be even. So come in at the top center, exit the bottom center, uh, it complicates the design a lot, obviously, doing it that way since I'm being really picky about it, but it should keep things nice and even. And then instead of relying on natural convection, I thought uh, force circulation with a fan uh, would keep everything nice and forcibly mixed. Because obviously that's the whole reason convection happens is because of temperature difference. So uh, in this case, well, I mean, once it settles, obviously the hot will be at the top, cold will be at the bottom, but uh, I thought it'd be better just to use a fan to continually um, keep the air circulated and keep it nice and even, so that way uh, the reading from the temperature sensor will be more steady, which, will it make much difference? It's probably negligible, but I'm going to do it anyway, because, well, it's my design, and that's kind of how I decided I would like to do it. Now, this is way overkill, so... Um, 
the first thing I noticed is look at how many pieces of wood and foam this is going to be to cut. It's like just on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then there's a side, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there's eleven and twelve here that you can't see because I removed them for the sake of being able to see the inside. I mean, there's tons of pieces. I think it was like sixty or seventy some pieces just to build the stupid thing out of wood and foam, and that's a lot. I'm kind of lazy, and I decided. What if I got rid of the entire left section? Because when you build something, the first thing you do is look at it and think, this will work, but surely I can make this more simple. I need to make it easier to build, easier to use. Uh, so the easier to build part, I decided instead of using this left duct here, what I was going to do, and I'm just going to make a really rough mock-up of what I'm going to do, is put some foam over here on the corners, on all of the corners, like that. Uh, and so if I did that in all four corners, this makes the inside of the chamber, well, it'll be an, technically an octagon, but it'll be more round than it is square. And and then I can run the air up the corner ducts. Now, to, because of the whole symmetry thing I was talking about, to keep the airflow even, I'll still do a hole in the bottom. And then in the bottom section, I'll have the hole, a hole in the corners for the air to come up. Uh, in these little corner ducts. And then somewhere in the top section, it'll collect those four air ducts, combine them into one, and then run them through the heatsink, which should be fairly straightforward and simple. Uh, the airflow down underneath and the airflow up in the top, I don't care how even it is between each corner duct. Uh, the only part I really care about the air being even temperature is in the middle fermentation section. So, um, should be pretty simple to, to funnel them all in together to one side and then through the heat sink and then back down the center. Uh, so I haven't quite got all that figured out. I might have to mount the heat sink um, tilted 90 degrees from how it is here. Uh, but that should greatly simplify uh, the design because I won't have to have all these pieces here on the left part. And um, yeah, that's really it. The top, obviously, I'll still have to have a power supply. I got a little server server size power supply, the little skinny ones, because uh, it takes up a lot less space. But obviously Peltiers draw serious current, um, like 20, 30, 40 amps, depending on the one you're using. So uh, I thought a computer power supply would probably be bare minimum what I would want to use. Uh, and then I've had temperature probe that with a long wire that I can tape onto here before I put the lid on it, and then set a temperature and it'll be good to go. So uh, whenever I get the redo of my design done, I'll definitely uh, probably make another video like this, it'll be much more quick because I don't have to show you what the carboy and the heatsink and all that looks like. Uh, and something tells me I might still do a third revision just to get everything to nice even lengths. Maybe I might go measure what a full sheet of MDF or the foam is to try to make the cuts more efficient so I don't have a lot of scrap left. Um, just because I'm weird like that. <laughs> uh, I like to be efficient. Uh, and then at some point um, I'll build it and then at another point I'll get the temperature logger out, put a gallon of water inside there and just do some test runs where I log it overnight to see how well it keeps the temperature stable and maybe I'll have another actual just jug of water sitting out in the basement as a control to measure against you know to see how much it changes versus the temperature inside the unit and, and then maybe eventually I'll uh, actually use this for real beer because right now uh, my beer's done fermenting and it's already in bottles, so the next one, uh, hopefully this will be done by then. Uh, but yep, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I am <laughs> no master of thermodynamics, so I'm sure I made a tons of mistakes or did a bunch of overkill stuff for, you know, things that I'll see almost no difference in. But yeah, whatever, it's it's fun to design this stuff and, and play around with it, so. But if, if you do, if you are a master of any of that stuff and you have any suggestions for my design, throw them down in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys have to say, so. Yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.